Okay, so this is going to be a good one. I'm excited about this. I would like to examine a clip of Destiny, the YouTuber and streamer, from, he made an appearance on Pierce Morgan last night, uh, responding to Katie Britt. But first, I think we should address some of the comments we've been getting, specifically about this dynamic and clarify to the audience. I do, I think it's important, what's important for me, transparency, and just to be as transparent as possible. So I'm going to read some of these comments to you. You've probably seen some of these, right? Yep. So these are regarding from the Beauty and the Beast video alone. Some pretty, pretty rough stuff on you. And I would ask people to, I'm super thankful to even have anyone here who's willing to do this with me. So please just be mindful of that when you are leaving comments. I mean, obviously you have the freedom to say whatever you want. One thing I try and do is anyone who is willing to have a conversation with me, I always want to give a chance to respond to anything. So then that goes for anyone who does in the future agree to speak with me. If you do so, you'll be given a chance to respond to anything that you do not agree with in the feedback. So just looking at some of these comments, extremely sad level of intelligence in those you debate. The persistent undertone of whining by the other teacher drives me insane. I do not find the entertainment value in debating someone who does not have coherent thoughts. These are different comments. He's talking to another teacher, question mark. Sounds like he's another student. The saddest part of this exchange is that the person you can't see is also a teacher, which means they are educating kids. Now, just to be clear, this is a teacher. And he teaches with me. We've been working together when we started working together, like really like last year, doing some filmmaking before this whole YouTube thing even happened. And you, we both share a passion for camera, which is why having someone here who can help with camera is extremely valuable. We never really planned this format. It just kind of evolved naturally. You're someone who I can speak to. And there's something to be said as well. I don't think your ideas and the thing, your perspective, I think it's valuable because it's shared by a large number of people, regardless of whether we agree with it or not. Yes, it would be great to have more people here in person willing to, and I've so far, I've been able to get a lawyer here and would like to get more of that. Though I do think there's still value in what you have to say because it's honest. This is not scripted. You're genuinely, gen, you're genuine, I mean, speak for yourself. What would your f response be to some of those comments I was just reading? I don't, um, I think I mentioned it to you before. I don't really care. I am open to conversation and <clears throat> um, I think they're a little childish. Um, I mean, <laughs> am I affected in one way or the other? No. Obviously not. Right. Right. Um, do I think, um, again, I, the way I try to live my, uh, my life is to be, to, you know, to take the decent path, the, uh, the respectful path, the, you know, when, in, when I'm interacting with people and these are not respectful comments, so then I choose not to read them. Regarding a comment such as this, the fact that he is likely having fake arguments designed to make him look good just to make it all, just makes it all the more baffling that he still comes across as such a clown. I guess that's directed towards me though. But as far as I have seen a lot of comments, not a lot, but there's a whole Reddit chain about this channel now, which I just discovered. And they're convinced that I'm scripting these conversations in order to achieve what they call quotable lines, which I didn't realize that my responses even warranted a quote. I don't think they do, but... What's a quotable line? I don't know, but I guess that they think that I'm, that this is all scripted in order to make me look good on camera because I guess the implication there is that you sound so stupid 
that I look good in comparison, which I don't understand exactly. I mean, I think going back to this, so when I play this Destiny clip, which I'd like to engage with, Destiny is not here to defend himself. It doesn't even honestly matter that it's Destiny. You don't even know who Destiny is, which no is another idea. great th thing I like about having you here is that you're not caught up in all this stuff. So the fact that you don't know who that is, it still has value because it's we're engaging with the idea, the, not the person. So it, which is why I think this format also works. We, we are, we're looking at the underlying logic behind these things. No, so to, we, yeah, to sum up like whatever you're saying um, earlier, You've asked me this question like countless times and I see you like chuckling off camera, you know, um, we're not having these conversations just on camera for our audience or whatever. Because um, we talk because we're colleagues and friends and, and so on, right? Um, but um, you asked me countless times, oh, have you heard about such and such or that YouTuber or that person? And I have to admit, I'm very disconnected with... I guess the world around me, I don't, I think it's a lack of time, most of it. Um, but that's why I'm coming into these conversations most of the time cold. Um, I could have conversations. We both are, right? Like we, right, like I don't. Like the wall thought experiment we came up with pretty much on the spot. And right, see that's, where it takes us. yeah, like. It's not hard to have a conversation, and but like I think that's the point of the, the, the channel, right? Like to engage with a human being and not, if you disagree with their point, call them a clown. Right. Right. That is a stopper of. It's not a. Yeah, which is clown why to, I'm so thankful, for your consistency and resiliency. The fact that you don't care about that stuff and you're still willing to keep doing this regardless, which is, which makes you so important and valuable. So just, that's what I mean when I say, please just keep in mind that I really <laughs> value having this person here to do this. It would not be possible to do that. I don't know many people. I don't know anyone else who would be willing to get feedback like that and still continue over and over. And again, I do think it's valuable because you are articulating genuine perspectives which are held by a large number of people so it's not just you this there's a lot of people that agree See, but with i you. don't know you, that you sit, i know you i know <laughs> but that oh, that's reflected in a lot of these comments where they call you an sjw stereotype i don't know what that is it's possible warren just has a friend who happens to be one of the dumbest sjw stereotypes of all time what's an sjw likes to have social justice warrior okay and who likes to have arguments with warren on camera just off screen and I don't think they're arguments either. Um, but SJ stereotype meaning you are you fall into this category, which is being recognized by these people. That's why they're calling us. You know what stereotype is? That's, I know so, a stereotype. I didn't know so, what SJW was. Yeah. So I get. I see what they. I get. <laughs> but anyways, enough of. The, so we just wanted to address that, um, and I hope to get more people. Then you can just do camera, and we can have other people we're not don't get me wrong i enjoy these conversations uh, i know you whether do. or not we're having them on camera or i know we, we have yeah <laughs> we will still have these this whole thing came out of us having a conversation at school off camera and they were like that might be interesting and then that thing went viral and then we ended up doing right. that that same week and that was the elon musk debate which we should do again we should talk about the recent um where he brought don lemon on don lemon so, I almost, so whenever you tell me, because you're way more in touch with um, current events and news, I almost, and I start researching it whenever you bring up a subject, and I, I, I do a little bit of research, but I almost, and I, because of the lack of time in my life, but I was thinking about this, that I almost don't want to do that much mm -hmm. research if we're talking about topics that don't have to do with, uh, I guess, verifiable data and you know, stuff like that. I see like what that. you mean. So, like, so if, you, if it's just like an, a subjective point like, of so view. So today's, we were, I said, hey, have you seen Sound of Freedom? We should talk about that. You haven't seen it. And you watched a bit of it. And if the real thing we want to engage with, the, that final stat, the fact that there are more, well, is this a fact? And I, please leave a comment below. My understanding is that this is true. So if this is not 
because this is mind blowing. This was, I saw this movie over when I had to travel home for that family emergency last week. I watched it with my mom, who people, if you watch this channel, you probably already know that she thinks like you do. She shares your perspective. Um, she's a big fan of yours. She likes you a lot because you, you know, uh, and she, I have went, one fan. Yeah. YouTube. She was engaged. You probably have more than that. She was engaged by the movie as well. She didn't know what to expect. Now that final statistic, there are more people in slavery today than at any point in history. I was, the, yeah, that is not a, uh, I was reading about this today. I did a, a wee little bit of research. Um, I think that is not a quote that they came up with. I think um, it, it's pulled from somewhere. It's, it's a, I, I heard this phrase, I read this phrase in, in a is variety of sources. Uh, they're saying it's really hard to tell. Um, every website, every paper. I was reading Time Magazine, an article. I was reading an article on the Wall Street Journal. Um, there are different numbers, different data. I, I don't know. If that is true, how did I not know that? Until how watching did I not this know movie. That? Yeah. You did not know that. My mom did not know that. No, that's mind blowing. So therefore, was the movie effective in changing that? Yes, it was. After watching the movie, I then did research. This is how powerful the movie was. My mom went and watched an hour and a half long podcast with Jordan Peterson and what's his name? Tim, um, the real guy. Ball Ballard. Tim Ballard. Yeah. An interview with and Jim Caviezel. And she usually never, that's probably her first podcast. So... It shows how effective the movie was. Question is, is that why, is that potentially why there was so, there was such a reaction to the movie from other media outlets? Connect, try in an effort to connect it to QAnon. Was that, is that why there was such a visceral response to it? Trying to attack it for various reasons. Some say there was an effort to bury it. It took five years. It was bought by Disney, sat for five years before being picked up by Angel Studios. Why would anyone think that this story should not be told? Why are people, there's YouTubers, we'll take a look at one today, who are actively angry about this movie. And that blows my mind. How could you, if that is true, there are more, if there are more people enslaved today that at any point in history, perhaps it's because of this. If there are more people enslaved in, his, in slavery today, and then you're also trying to have a conversation around reparations, how can you then have the two? How can you say we need to have reparations for slavery that happened over 100 years ago when there are more people in slavery today? Because then you can spin that logic right back and say, if you actually wanted to do, fight slavery, it's not through paying the descendants of slaves money in America today when there are slaves out there right now. That's a foolish course of action in the face of that. And that the logic there is just too, it's difficult to contend with and therefore that argument dissolves. And there's a power in that. So perhaps that's why. I don't know, that's speculation, but is the Destiny interview on this Good topic? Good question. So, the, you saw the State of the Union, the, res, the Republican response to the State of the Union, yes, by Katie Britt, was um, stylistically interesting. There was a lot of fun to be poked at it that people did poke. Saturday Night Live did a spoof on it the following evening. Pierce Morgan last night has a panel of guests. Destiny is one of them. This streamer who is very intelligent, though I'm not sure he's wise. I, w I would love to talk to him. I, not that he would ever even take, see uh, that I warrant the conversation, but why do I not think he's wise? Well, <laughs> well he married Melina for one. <laughs> you don't know who that is, but she's a Swedish. <laughs> he's a in a polyamorous relationship, it went south, which was 
anyway, probably wasn't the wisest decision. Um, though I do give him credit for his ability to, he, I do not think he's a grifter. I think he genuinely believes what he thinks and he doesn't seem to care what, he's not trying to pander to a specific audience. He seems to really say what he thinks at the time and doesn't really worry about how it's going to land. So I do, I do respect that. In an interview, and also on the wisdom front, Candace Owens recently, he, that was great. They're both sitting there in the same room at his computer having a debate. She's like, you're 30, he's 35, he's a year younger than me. You're a 35-year-old man. Like, what are you doing, doing living this lifestyle or talking about the things? So she was kind of attacking that wisdom element, what I'm, what I'm saying, but that's not for me to really. But he is, a very, he is very articulate and intelligent. They call him the Ben Shapiro of the left. Uh, he recently uh, debated Ben Shapiro, and I give him props for sure. Uh, him and Anna Kasparian are two people that I do give props major to from on that side of the spectrum. So anyways, last night, he was, he's asked by Pierce Morgan about that Republican response by what's, what was her, Katie Britt. All right, let's listen to this real Make quick. Make of this when you were watching it. I feel like it's a perfect summary right now of where the conservative party is at in the United States. This is like fake, uh, this faint outrage for what's going on. It's these impassioned pleas to save the country. It's the horrendous misciting. Like we just got, you know, all of this, uh, all of these people upset that Biden mispronounced the one lady's name and here this lady is completely and totally misrepresenting this story, trying to blame uh, Biden uh, for the, the woman that had basically been sex trafficked what, I think it was like 10 or 20 years ago. This lady's been traveling around the country telling this story for like some decades now. And uh, Katie's trying to pretend like this happened under Biden. I just think it's a perfect summation of, of what the conservative party stands for right now, which is like all outrage and no substance. So the first question is, how is this a perfect summation of what the part Republican party stands for? <laughs> that, that's, that would be my goal. Because when he's, when he's saying there, okay, let's, let's give it to you, Destiny, that, the example she provided, let's say it was inaccurate. She was telling the story of a person who was actually trafficked under a different president years ago. Okay, is sex trafficking not still happening though? The underlying point is that, the cons that in that response is conservatives are concerned about sex trafficking across the border. Okay, the name of the one, of the one person, the example was incorrect. How is how but so how is that a perfect summation of what what were the words he used um, over substance outrage and no substance so because that example was incorrect conservatives are wrong to be outraged about sex trafficking am I reading that wrong can you see any I think regardless you should be appalled by these things it that then it's then it's not <laughs> dependent on an example or another, it's right? A, it's so it's yes, it's not so even if that even if I were to say, okay, I'm trying to make this argument, here's an example. Oh, I got that example. That actually happened five years ago. Okay, I'm sorry, that person was sex trafficked a few years earlier. Okay. Oh well that negates you and you're just you're you're no substance, you're all well actually the response to the response was all about her, Katie Britt's strange delivery, which was style, rather than engaging with the substance of what she's saying. The only critique I've heard has been that point over and over. Different people saying, the example was a few years earlier under a different president. And then they don't engage further with any of the substance, then they just attack the style. Saturday Night Live, it was, which is parody, of course. Everyone's making fun of her how she delivered the words and not contending with the substance any further than that point. Which I agree in, about you should be appalled by human trafficking, especially after seeing Sound of Freedom. And you said something interesting to me about how it was difficult as a parent. Yeah, it's difficult to watch. I mean, you know, you having a child like completely changes your view of life and your priorities and your responsibilities and right and plus it's like 
that you pour so much love into these <laughs> little human beings, right? And to see something like this, I, you know, to, to watch this, uh, it makes you scared and it makes you, you scared is terrified, right? Uh, it makes you want to go home and check see if your child is okay, right? So it's it's it's. I feel like parents. Uh, it's really hard to to watch a movie like this because you understand it on a different level. Which makes you then say, what could it? it, it perhaps it makes other things feel less important in comparison. Yeah, I think one of the most riveting scenes in the movie, besides because. It's it's a movie, so they're gonna drama, but uh, you know, they're gonna. I guess right. it's not a documentary, right? So it has to be mm -hmm. somewhat uh, the artistic view of the director, because it's art. Um, but one of the most riveting scenes for me was when the dad was knocking on the door, and right that like, and that's in the first what five minutes of the movie, and I was like, oh man, like I have to pause it because it's not you know. You had to pause it? I had to pause it like last night, and especially after a day of work and, and, and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I started watching it again this morning with fresh eyes and. Um, yeah. After a reset. But um, I guess apart from the oddly enough, a lot of people were comparing this to Taken uh, in the articles that I've read. With the but more heart. Is, Jim Caviezel even said that himself. He's like, it's like Taken, but with more heart, and it's real. Which, right. what happens in Taken is not real. Let's look at this response, though. This is just from, and again, this kind of goes to how your, your role as being someone off camera. I'm not even going to reveal who this is, and it doesn't matter, because just his words speak enough. Um, there's sprinkles of truth in a lot of, like, almost every conspiracy. Um, like, the QAnon existing as a movement didn't invent a lot of the ideas that are found in QAnon and that are found in this film. It's just... What idea, what QAnon ideas, what ideas invented by QAnon are found in this film? That's what I'm having trouble understanding. Can I, with my lack of... Um, yeah. Uh, QAnon was, it's the conspiracy that's the movement it's the organization i don't know what to call it the one where they're saying that uh i don't know politicians are harvesting yeah, hormones are, to yeah. live forever stuff like that i yeah i honestly don't that know that has I don't think it, been disproven scientifically right so i don't anyways that which part oh you're saying which part of the movie is well i just thought it just shows how that's a logical that's the a lot of the argument i'm seeing against this movie is the following that train of thought and this person even because the movie was made years before we ever heard of anything called QAnon. his point here is that well QAnon, <laughs> they didn't invent these ideas they existed before so that doesn't mean that the filmmakers just because the movie was made before QAnon existed doesn't mean they don't embody those ideas, yet no one can identify any of the ideas. So I just, I found that, that was insightful. Um, lo lo look at this though, 1455. I, <sighs> By telling their story in a way only the cinema can do, for a couple of months while Sound of Freedom is in theaters, these kids can be more powerful than the cartel kingpins or presidents or congressmen or even- How are you that easily manipulated? How are you that fucking easily manipulated, you fucking idiots? Holy shit, you fucking idiots! I'm billionaire. I'm going to let this play because it's worth. It's worth it. It's about the kids. It was actually made five years ago. It wasn't released till now. With every roadblock that you can imagine. They tried to stop us from releasing the movie five years ago. We don't want finances to be the reason someone doesn't see this movie. QR code, QR code, so fucking funny. Angel.com slash freedom. Holy fuck, how manipulative can you possibly get? Could you imagine, could you imagine at the end of a movie they, they have a QR code and they're like gay.com slash trans. You're equating a mo sex trafficking to being trans. It's just the logic is shocking. 
And he's so bothered, genuinely. Could you imagine? He's so upset by this. I can't. I won't keep it going too much longer. But this is important. With as many friends as you can. Just the glee. It's just, just, it's. And I wouldn't care if this was a singular case. But again, these are ideas that are shared by many people, which then led me. I was just thinking about this today. I was like, how could there be such a difference in per two different perspectives? How could there be such a difference in a reaction to something like this? How do you contend with that idea that there are people out there that see this so differently, they can look at the same thing and have such a different reaction? I think, so me going into watching this film, Besides knowing that it was Jim Caviezel and I last saw him in the Mel Gibson's uh, the, the, Passion. Passion of the Christ, yeah. And then not seeing, I mean, maybe I missed it, but um, I think that was the role that he gets remembered. From. Like, I went into this, I did not, I don't know if the director has wanted to say something, if he had an agenda. I don't know if the actors, I don't know. It's a true story, Tim I don't Ballard know. Right. helped uh, make the movie. I mean, it's movie. based on a true story, and so that that is, uh, you know, inter... It's, and I would even argue it's more than based on a true story. They had to shrink it down to make it fit, it, because the actual operation was even longer, and there was actually, it was larger than what appears on the screen. Right, so I might... Uh, agree with I don't know who uh, I read a quote today. Well, when I was doing my research, uh, somebody said that the whole operation was a bit more nuanced that they showed in the movie. So I might agree with that because of sure. course, right? You don't have the days or weeks or months or years to put in a two-hour movie or two and a sure. half hour. Then again, I took it as a movie to raise awareness about the social issue. Yes, an important issue. Now these comments, these were the comments beneath this video. The same comment in different forms over and over again. Now that I think about it, this really is the conservative version of, if you don't like Black Panther, then that means you're racist. The next comment, apparently if you dislike an anti-war movie, that means you're, means you're pro-bombing civilians. You can, it's one thing to say, I didn't like it as a movie that much. It was either just too disturbing for me, which a lot of people are, have that reaction, or it just wasn't my cup of tea as a movie, though I can recognize that this is an important topic. And I'm here's glad where, I, where I make the difference, and here's That's where... That's different, though. Then, do you see the difference, though? Yeah. The, this, the glee we just heard in his voice is saying that you're such an idiot for being moved by this movie or for caring about what you're watching, you're being hoodwinked. That what, the reaction you just heard, that's different than me saying, I, I didn't care for Black Panther. So I'm sorry, but the logic just, what were you saying? I was saying that uh, the first, so I thought it was interesting because it, is, it, it caught me emotionally first. And I'm usually, a lot of times when I'm watching a movie, I, I start losing track because I am passionate about music first and foremost in a movie. Uh, and since I can't not listen to that, and I am passionate about um, the filmmaking process. So I thought the, the first thought that went through my head in the opening scene, I was like, oh my God, this is such a cool intro. The... And I, I was think I, I yeah. was in my head already. It was well done. Was it a drone? How did they get the drone there? How does it turn? How, you know, um, and so on and so forth. And then, right away in the first minute, um, yeah, I, I, I flipped the switch to an emotional reaction. 
rather than an analytical one. But I can watch the movie, and it's a well-made movie. There's some interesting shots in it. Mm -hmm. The color is really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, you know. This, then, a few minutes later, he moves into the crossover between religious people and religious people being conspiracy theorists based upon emotion. And he actually talks about critical thinking over and over in this video several times, saying that a critical thinking is not being applied by these people. But, I would actually turn that right back around on you, bud. You were to tell me that, like, you, you thought it was manipulative, that message, in the sense of marketing the movie. So if you're saying come watch this movie that uh, we encountered so many obstacles in the making of it, the movie they don't want you to see, the true, you know, um, or buy a ticket. I could even believe that because at the end of the day, may, you know, I mean, it's a, I guess it's a better point than but what saying if the, that. But what if... Jim Caviezel is recording that message because he genuinely wants as many people to see this movie because it is effective, and as I illustrated at the beginning of this conversation, where it even had an effect on my mom. I, I didn't know about that beforehand. Mm -hmm. It is effective. Therefore, I would like as many people to see this. How can you attribute someone's motivations? How can you tell, determine, oh, that's just financially motivated or not? So therefore, it's like, uh, that's where the, a lot of the criticism is coming from is following that logic, saying, oh, you... But is this criticism coming from people... I understand there's some controversy with the person of Jim Caviezel. Why? Uh, I don't know. His, his connections with whatever. His past it's, statements... Uh, they're trying... So CNN's coverage is very revealing. It's very interesting. They went full on trying to say that this is... Tribute this to QAnon, saying that he's a QAnon conspiracist. Okay. And then Tim Ballard comes out and goes, I don't even know what QAnon is. So that is, and the question then is, why is CNN going out of their way to paint a movie you found moving that is clearly important? Why would they go out of their way to try and even attack it in any way? That's interesting. I could understand why Disney, if they bought the, I understand that Disney bought the rights first for the movie and then they'd not make it. It sat for five years. Okay. Um, I could see that. I mean, I, but I will look at that very, on a shallow level, uh, you know, low budget movie. Attributed to perhaps they couldn't find the market. Market. Malice. Though, or just the money itself. Just though the coverage from CNN cannot be dismissed. You can't say that that was just because, oh, they had apprehension. But no, that was an, and they went out of their way to take action against something that is clearly important. But Why? were they taking action against the movie itself or the, the people behind the characters, the actual that's an interesting point because Tim Ballard's point is that when the operation actually occurred, CNN covered it favorably. Years go by, and now their coverage has completely changed. Now Donald Trump is into the picture. Now they're claiming this QAnon thing, which I guess it, I'm sure it exists in some form. There's always going to be crazy people. Now they've completely, so there's clearly a motivation. Why would you cover it one way and then events occur? Which then oh, you mean covering the, the actual... The whole thing. The whole thing the when whole it happened thing. with the... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would encourage you just to go look on YouTube, type in Sound of Freedom, and look how CNN covers it. It speaks... They articulate themselves better than I can. 